Hi, I'm Alana Frost, WPA at the University of Alabama in Huntsville. My contribution illustrates one WPA's work conditions and her strategies for navigating the position as junior faculty working towards just awarded tenure. I was hired from grad school, where I had done administrative work in a variety of capacities, to be the Writing Center director. After my first year, the Writing Center was taken to be administered by a separate institutional unit, the Student Success Center, and I was asked to switch to Comp Admin. In Martha Townsend's chapter, Negotiating the Risks, Reaping the Rewards, she describes institutional conditions like mine for the job she desired as a career path, where WPA work simply did not count. My institution mirrors hers, but I was a more reluctant WPA. Yet, there it was, the not-so-appealing work, and there I was, my untenured self. Further, responsibilities were ill-defined. Here, I speak to conditions in which, for tenure, I had to both articulate what WPA work was and neglect it for my real work as a researcher. We know the work is invisible. I can file transfer credit. Does not equal. I got a revise and resubmit. Orientation consisted of one meeting. In it, the former director offered a seemingly random litany of tasks. I knew it was a list that I would have to convert to a tenurable story. The real story is that, at first, there was no list. The reality for me, in the first two years, was that I found myself simply reacting to requests. Some unusual, most run-of-the-mill, some run-of-the-mill with a twist. Immediately, I was fielding advisor emails asking about credit for courses from other institutions, courses that had received CLEP or AP credit, courses from other parts of the planet. I had to react to all manner of bureaucracy about getting out of, around, or into 101 and 102. The task was stressful every time. For each request, about 50 a year, there was a reinvented wheel. Each advisor had created their own form. Student information was devilish to find. Different requests necessitated triplicate forms sent to different people. My 50 reactions a year necessitated planning. I held meetings with advisors and the registrar to agree on a common request method and form. I created a table to help field advisors' questions. The ways in, around, and out of composition became slightly less mysterious. I also reacted to the yearly selection of teaching assistants, GTAs. For my first two spring semesters, this responsibility reared when the director reminded me that I needed to choose post-haste. I had as data only a long list of names and grade point averages. So, I created another form, requested a writing sample, and began interviewing all applicants. Towards mitigating our dependence on contingent faculty, I argued for new GTA positions each year. Last year, I proposed for a permanent minority GTA line for our very Caucasian college. My Achilles heel remains the scheduling. My first experience, a blank grid, and a request to conjure a fall semester. Since, I have railed, cajoled, and cried a little. Problems persist. Our admin assistant promises a class. The previous year's schedule is published by the registrar. I get constant emails about mistakes. But more successes. 102 Forever Lit class is now one of academic inquiry. The yearly publication of a comp guide offers instructors adopted learning outcomes. Despite backseat status on my agenda, the urgency of pedagogical responsibility compelled unasked for and not reactionary changes. Further, I don't work in a dungeon with mad colleagues. Simply, none of us are trained for the morass that is higher education's boxing, checking, and numbering of humans. These tasks, as many more experienced WPAs have offered, are difficult to wrangle and harder to read as intellectual work. So, I'm a storyteller. In my tenure file, each reaction becomes a challenge accepted. The request came hard and fast, but I was able to wrestle all those responsibilities into a cohesive narrative with tables, explaining the mentoring, researching, and bureaucratic skills required of the job. Townsend suggests that the untenured utilize the WPA organization's resources of the journal, mentoring, and conferences. For a reactionary me, much of that had to stay off my radar. Because of my own research agenda, I was already connected to other communities. With hindsight, of course, I should have. But I had to concentrate more on my work than WPA work, and I got lucky. A colleague asked me to collaborate on a retention study of basic writers, writing center use. From this project, I learned how to use statistics to make arguments for our publication and to win material resources for our program. Townsend offers a narrative of success. Her department negotiated WPA conditions for her tenure. Anecdotally, I think it remains far more the case that WPA work for junior faculty is forced to the back burner as much as possible in favor of research. What is essential in the process is the tabulation, the wrangling of the work. It is compelling to get mired in the urgency of requests from stakeholders for your time. Understanding and meeting department tenure guidelines, admittedly sometimes shifty and feckless requirements, must come first. Four, the success of a comp program is equally shifty and feckless. It's established when we arrive, it can be maintained piecemeal without us. Ed White makes a similar argument. He reminds us that, although times are, hopefully, changing, tenure remains the capital we need to make the changes we believe will help our students and our departments.